very good afternoon to all. I take immense pleasure in welcoming all the students for this exclusive webinar on crafting a winning statement of purpose for your university applications. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. I am Ishka Kapse. I am currently majoring in marketing alongside a psychology minor. I am a second year student at Flame University and I'm also a student ambassador. Flame Upskill's primary goal is to assist high school students in developing critical skills for their learning and growth. And in this series, you will explore areas outside of your courses, which will help you build your profiles for higher education. Please note, this is an important announcement. Attendees who complete the entire session will be given a letter of participation. You will receive the letter by next week. I'll post a link to the feedback form in the chat section, and you must fill it in order to receive your letter of participation. This would be a required procedure. Today's session will be taken by Professor Michael Burns. Professor Michael Burns has completed his PhD in documentary film history from the University of Birmingham in UK in 2008, becoming the first student in the United Kingdom to submit an audiovisual doctorate. Since then, he's completed five documentary films for international television, and his work has appeared in over 20 countries. In recent years, he has developed a strong interest in story structure and the traditions of storytelling. While living in Bombay from 2011 to 2017, Professor Burns founded and directed Tall Tales, India's longest-running live non-fiction storytelling event series. He has published two books derived from his storytelling. He also teaches the most popular creative writing workshop in India under the Tall Tales umbrella. In addition to his work as a writing coach for aspiring writers, both would-be novelists and non-fiction authors, he also runs international writing retreats through his company, The Story Retreat. It is a pleasure to have you amongst us so today. I'm confident that the students will feel more knowledgeable by the end of this session. Over to you. Okay, great. Thank you so much for the introduction. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Maybe you can just let me know if you can't hear me because then I can try to adjust myself. I am uh, joining you from home in Bombay today. And I have a very naughty doggy who doesn't like my attention to be diverted anywhere besides him. So let's see if he cooperates with us. Okay. So I'm very happy to be talking with you uh, today about this very important subject. Um, I really like it when I'm in the classroom at Flame. You know, I teach academic writing as well as creative writing um, in our Pune campus. And I really like it when I get a chance to speak with students while I'm teaching, because believe it or not, like I can learn from you just as you can learn from me. And when we do a webinar type of thing, we don't get a chance to um, interact as much. Um, so sometimes I'm gonna ask you a question and instead of answering it, maybe you can just kind of think about it, okay? And I'll give you a little while to, to think about it. Um, because today's topic is a challenging one. So I, I want us to spend a little bit of time and we have over an hour to, um, to talk about this important thing and to really learn how to do it. And also to sort out some of the advice that you're getting um, from places like the internet, which is always, which, is, which isn't which is always full with the best possible advice, okay? So we're gonna kind of sort through that as well. All right, so the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to write down any questions that you might have about statements of purpose. I want you to take one minute. I'm gonna give you 60 seconds to write down any questions that you might have. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop a little bit early at the end and take some of those questions. Um, I'm guessing maybe some of the questions that you write down now will be answered by the end of the session. But if one of them hasn't been answered, we will go ahead and try to answer it at the end. So take a minute right now to write down some questions. Hopefully you have something to take notes with in front of you right now. I'll give you a minute to do that. Any question at all about, what, uh, about anything having to do with today's topic, statement of purpose? Okay, 
So I hope you took a second to do that. It's really important because um, you might you might have questions and I might not be uh, in my presentation, I might not be addressing those, but I would like to be able to do that by the time we finish uh, today. So um, let's talk about what a statement of purpose actually is, okay? A statement of purpose, as you probably already have a sense already, a statement of purpose is one of the requirements for almost all university applications. So you're applying to a university, and there is an application set of documents that they expect you to give to them, okay? And there's several things that they're going to be asking for. One of them might be your transcript, one of them might be your essay, one of them might be your statement of purpose. And there even are additional things like um, uh, letters of recommendation, and things along those lines as well, okay? So the first thing to realize is that the statement of purpose is one of those pieces. So why is that important to keep in mind? The reason is because, ask yourself this, like why, why does the university that I'm applying to, why don't they just get my transcripts only, only my grades? And their answer would be because the grades only show one aspect of you. You're much more than just the grades that you achieved in, in your classes, the marks that you achieved in your classes. Um, in other words, every part of their application touches on a different aspect of you, right? So that's why there's more than one piece of paper because you have more than one dimension to you. So the more information that the uh, university has, the more they get to know you as a person, a rounded, a well-rounded person. They get a good a cross section of the different things that you have to offer, okay? This is really important because every document that you submit as part of your packet of, of application uh, materials serves a different purpose. So just to go back to that example that I was saying a minute ago, and your transcripts are all about your grades. So your transcripts, basically every course that you took and what marks you received in that course. Now, some students will write a, a statement of purpose and it will kind of recap all of their grades and that they got in their classes because they're very proud of those things, right? But that would be a very bad idea because that information is already available through the transcript. In other words, whenever we have a new piece of uh, 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 of application material, we want to touch on a new aspect of yourself. So a lot of students don't really know what the different pieces of the application are supposed to show. So what they end up doing is kind of duplicating that information in different ways. I mean, their essay ends up being about one topic. The statement of purpose is pretty much the same topic. And maybe even the letters of recommendation also kind of touch on that same topic. So instead of getting three or four different aspects of you, the, 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 the receiver of the application is just getting one over and over again, okay? So if we don't really know what a statement of purpose is, then it becomes difficult for us to make it different from the other pieces of the application, okay? So I hope that that um, makes sense to you. And then today, really today's session is about what a statement of purpose actually is and uh, how to craft a really good one. Uh, not just a good one, but a great one, okay, that people will remember when they read. Okay, so the first thing that we should know is that uh, a statement of purpose is different than some of the other things in the application. So let's just take kind of the most famous aspect of a university application, which is the college essay. And you know, uh, uh, there's been so much written and so many videos online. And even in your classes, you probably heard about this uh, college essay. There's kind of a lot of pressure to make your college essay great. And, um, and it is important. It's an important part of your application. But the, the point of the essay is to really show who you are like inside, you know, like your values, your character, okay? In fact, in your essay, you don't even have to mention anything about school, nothing about high school at all. Your essay can be about that time, I don't know, the time you found a puppy on the side of the road and what you did. You brought it to the vet and then you ended up getting it adopted or something, right? That has nothing to do with taking a class or anything like that, right? Or the time you went hiking in a place where you had fell a few years ago, but then you found the courage to go hiking there, whatever it might be. It has nothing to do with academics or anything like that. 
So when, as writers, we're always kind of thinking about um, like writing from the heart, okay? And writing from the heart basically shows who you are inside your character, your values, your who you are as a like a living, breathing human being. And that's what the essay is all about, okay? The essay. Now, the statement of purpose, what is that about? That is, if the essay is more about the heart and a little bit about the head, the statement of purpose is a little bit about the heart and much more about the head. In other words, the statement of purpose is there to show the person on the other end a few different things, okay? They want to know if you are a serious student, if you're genuinely interested in studying at the university level, are you committed to this? Not everybody in the world goes to university. Not everybody has to, to live a happy life. They want to know, are you serious about studying, right? So we're kind of looking at here a little bit more than here. They also want to know, can you write? You know, whether we like it or not, writing is a critical part of being a university student. In fact, 90% of your assignments are going to involve writing at the university level. So they want to know whether you can write. They want to know if you can proofread. Proofread means making sure that your work is, is perfect before you submit it. Are you careful with your words? Are you careful to get every grammat grammatical detail, spelling detail exactly right? You know, uh, have you thought about the applying to this institution beforehand? Or have you just kind of randomly picked a name because your parents suggested it and then you wrote this letter? So the statement of purpose is also going to investigate whether you've really uh, done a little bit of research on this place or not. They wanna know, do you know the difference between formal and informal writing? Formal writing shows that you are uh, serious about something. And so you're gonna speak in a certain way, the way that you kind of speak when you're requesting something formally from someone. And informal writing uses slang and other buzzwords and other types of expressions that we might use in text, but we would never use in a letter. Um, so this is what the, uh, the statement of purpose is. It's about who you are as a thinker more than who you are as a feeler, an, emo an emotion having human being, which is what the essay is all about, okay? So that's kind of like our broad strokes in terms of what a statement of purpose is. It's like your intellectual commitment to studying something as opposed to your um, emotional commitment to being a compassionate human being, which is what the essay is, okay? Different documents because you have different aspects of yourself, right? You have a head, you have a heart. Let's use a different document to show that, okay? In other words, we don't wanna repeat everything that's in the essay. We don't wanna repeat everything that's in the transcripts of the letters of recommendation. We wanna talk about you as a serious individual. And that's why it's a really important part of your application because that aspect of you is something that is gonna be evaluated. And it might even be the decision maker in terms of whether you get in or not, okay? So in our session today, we're going to actually like kind of build a precursor to a statement of purpose. What do I mean by that? This is not a session where I just want you to take notes or just watch. I want you to participate because what we're going to do together, since almost everyone watching this will eventually be writing a statement of purpose, if you haven't already, I want us to do it together. So, uh, Maybe you've learned this about writing. Maybe you haven't learned this about writing. But writing is a process. Writing is not something that you do one time. It's something you kind of start with some brainstorming, get some ideas churning. And then eventually, it's almost like, have you ever seen somebody make a vase um, on one of those potter wheels, potter's wheels? So they, the wheel, you take all this clay and you put it on the wheel and then you slowly spin it and then eventually faster and faster and some of the clay kind of goes away and then some is left in the shape that you're looking for. Like sometimes when we think about writing, it's almost like we wanna put the finished vase right on the potter's wheel from the beginning, right? But actually in order to write the best we, thing we can possibly write, we have to start off with a lot of material, get rid of some material, change some, refine, maybe even start all over again. So what you and I are gonna to do today is like kind of create the raw material for your statement of purpose. And then later on, 
after this is over, maybe next week, maybe next month, who knows when, you can take those notes and actually start to shape it into a real statement of purpose. But we're gonna do some of that hard work right now of getting that clay onto that wheel, all right? So uh, just to give you a little bit of an overview, a statement of purpose is usually one page long or sometimes two pages. The reason that uh, there is no fixed uh, length for a statement of purpose is because a lot of times the applying institution will tell you how many words they want the statement of purpose to be. So if they say something like 500 words that will easily fit on one page, but if they say something like, we would like your statement of purpose to be no shorter than 1200 words, 1200 words, that's going to pour over onto a second page. So keep that in mind. It's like, for example, with a resume, one page is always what we should do. But with the statement of purpose, one to two pages is perfectly fine. We can have a little bit of a range when it comes to that, okay? So let's kind of begin by getting into some of that raw material, all right? So what I want all of you to do right now on the paper in front of you, and I hope you're taking notes, I want you to think of three words that kind of describe you very well. And like three, maybe three adjectives. Okay, and I want you to really think about this. Like don't always grab the first thing that pops into your head. I want you to really think about it. if you had to describe yourself in three adjectives, like what would they be? All right, think this through. I'm gonna give you a little while to think about this. Three, how would you describe yourself? Take some time, write them down. Okay, so let's say that you have three there. I hope you have three on the page in front of you. Now, what I want you to do is there's this, uh, if you haven't, if you've ever been to a writing workshop or a writing class, especially creative writing, you will have heard this kind of famous mantra, kind of like famous adage that is always a, a part of a writing workshop. And that the adage is show, don't tell. Show, don't tell means that when you're writing something, you want to show the reader evidence that something is true rather than telling them. So here's what I mean by that. If you wrote down the one of the things that you are, like one of the adjectives that you came up with is uh, studious. So studious just means somebody who studies. I want you to translate that word into an action. In other words, my word is going to be studious, but now my little small sentence is going to be, um, I dedicate at least five hours every day to studying. So studious is telling, and the sentence is showing, right? If I see somebody studying for five hours a day, I can come to the conclusion that they are studious, okay? Maybe the word you wrote down was athletic. Okay, great. But what's the evidence? I want you to give me one sentence. I like to play this sport, this sport, and this sport. Fantastic, right? And in other words, athletic is telling. Now I want you to show me with another sentence. So you have three words in front of you. Next to all three words, I want you to write a sentence that demonstrates why that's true. Okay? So we're kind of translating from telling, moving over to showing. Take your time. I know this is not that easy, you know, but uh, it, it's, it's very important. You have three adjectives about you, and now I want to know the evidence for it. If you come to Flame or if you come to a different university, you will learn more about this uh, show, don't tell principle and how important it is in writing. Okay, so let's say that you've done that. I hope you have done that. 
the, because that's going to be one of the critical building blocks in order for us to eventually come up with a statement of purpose. Okay. So the next thing that I want you to think about is, okay, if I said to you, like, tell me or write down, write down on the page in front of you, a subject that you're interested in. I'm sure you could think of many things that you're interested in. Most, most young people I know are interested in dozens of things. But I want you to write down on the page in front of you, I want you, you to write down something you're passionate about. So I think there's, an in, there's a difference between, between being interested in something and being passionate about it. Interest maybe is like kind of um, uh, a temporary thing or maybe like I'm just curious about that thing in terms of a passing interest like a, you know, I'm interested in it now, but I might not be interested in it tomorrow, or I just kind of have a surface level interest in something. But passion to me is something that you not only think about, but you also really care about. And it's probably something that you've cared about for a long time. And you can also imagine yourself caring about this thing into the future, okay? I want you to write down two things that you are really passionate about. Two things that you're really passionate about. Okay, so I hope that you wrote down two things now. Here's the kind of important detail as a follow-up to that. You have two things on the page in front of you. I want you to make sure that one of them, at least one of them, is something that can be studied. Something that can be studied. And here's what I mean by that. Let's say that you, um, you like to write little stories or something like that, and you've made up a character. You made up your own kind of character, and this is the hero of your little stories that you like to write. This character is awesome and you might be passionate about it, but this is not something that can be studied because nobody has written anything about this, right? This is your creation. Or for example, like what I was telling you about my dog before, like one of the things I'm passionate about is my dog, but this would really not qualify for our exercise because I can't study that. I can't study him in particular because nobody has written about, about it. So I want you to, um, um, among the two things, between the two things that you chose to be passionate about, I want you to make sure that one of them is something that can be studied. So let's just say that you wrote down, um, uh, I am in, I'm passionate about the beach. I love going to the beach. Fantastic. And there's actually thousands of books that have been written about the beach and details having to do with the sand and the, and the erosion and the coral reefs and all these various things. So that would qualify as absolutely something that could be studied. I hope that that makes sense to everyone. So we're finding a passion, something we really care about over a long period of time. And then we're also asking ourselves, can this thing be studied? And when we say can be studied, what are you gonna study? You're mostly going to study research that other people have done about this thing. So if it's your own creation, there's no way anyone could have done any uh, writing about it. But if it's something like mountains or beaches or even a uh, sport or something like that, of course, there's so, so much been written about those, uh, those subjects, okay? So I want you to pick one of those passions. Now, maybe both of them, the, both of the things that you wrote down, maybe both of them can be studied. Fantastic, wonderful. Maybe only one of them can be studied. So now it's easy for you. What I want you to do now is choose one item on that list. So you wrote down two things. Now the one that you choose is going to be our focus for this session. Okay. For like our hypothetical, our kind of practice statement of purpose. So you're going to pick one of those two passions. Okay. So let's just imagine that you wrote down beach and then you realize, okay, the, the professor said that this could be studied, great, and this is my chosen item. Okay, fantastic, wonderful. Whatever you happen to have, as long as it can be studied, that's great. We're going to build our hypothetical or theoretical or 
practice sense uh, um, statement of purpose around this passion of yours, okay? So a lot of times in writing, um, it's really not the ideas that make a difference. We call that, the, when we're talking about the ideas, we're talking about the content. The content means like the words that you use. It's not always the words that are important. It's the way that the words are organized, how they are delivered. And I mentioned that before with respect to uh, grammatically correct and spelling mistakes and all this type of thing. The presentation of your ideas is just as important as the ideas themselves, okay? The reason I'm mentioning that is because we're going to think about assembling your statement of purpose in four paragraphs. In other words, there's kind of like four parts to your statement of purpose, and we can think of each part as one paragraph, okay? Now, one of the things that I teach at Flame, uh, I spend a lot of time teaching students exactly what a paragraph is and how to write great paragraph. We don't really have time for that today, but I will tell you right now that basically a paragraph is about six sentences long, okay? Four to eight sentences, six sentences. So for now, really all you need to know is that we have four parts to our statement of purpose. Each part is going to be about six sentences long and six sentences equals one paragraph. Four paragraphs, four parts, six sentences, so probably somewhere around 25 sentences in total. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So our focus, our, the, the thing we're putting underneath the magnifying glass is that one passion that you chose. And now we're going to use that as inspiration to come up with these four parts for our statement of purpose, okay? So part number one is looking closely at this thing that you are passionate about. What makes you passionate about this? Why are you so interested in this? And, I, and, I, and, and what I mean by this is like, what about this thing fascinates you so much? Why do you care about this thing? Does it, how does it make you feel when you learn more about it? the details around why you are so interested in that, okay? So let's just say you pick the beach, right? I love going to the beach because when I go to the beach, I finally feel like free. I feel like a sense of uh, like I don't have uh, so many response. I know that my responsibilities and all my schoolwork and everything, I know that it's there, but for when I'm there for a little while, at least I have this sense of freedom. I also feel like, uh, so much of the world lives inside the ocean and on the land. And I feel like these are where these two worlds kind of meet each other, the land dwellers and the sea dwellers. I think there's something cool about the meeting point between those two, right? These are all reasons why I think the beach is awesome, right? So that's what I want you to do right now. I want you to write one or two sentences about what makes this thing so uh, fascinating to you. What, why are you passionate about this thing? Maybe you know, Korean pop music is, is what you're passionate about. Fantastic, great. Like, what is it? Is there one particular group? Is there certain songs, is there certain themes? Is there certain videos that really uh, uh, light you up, get you excited, resonate with you? So this is kind of like you are dissecting that passion to figure out what's so exciting about it. All right, so one or two sentences about that. Now, if we were really doing the statement of purpose, you would build this into an entire paragraph. 
I wouldn't just have one sentence that says, you know, I think it's really cool that so many things live in the ocean, so many things live on land, and this is the moment when they meet. That's one sentence, but I would build it into a four to eight sentence, maybe six, maybe eight sentence paragraph that really dissects what's so interesting to me about the beach, right? So for now, just because for the sake of time, so that I can introduce you to these four parts, you're just going to write one or two sentences, but on your own, which is when the when the uh, statement of purpose really gets done on your own, um, you can expand that further, okay? But I just wanted to give you a taste of what's gonna go into part one, all right? Let's move on to part two. And this is the one where I want you to write a little bit more than one sentence. I'm gonna give you a little bit of extra time to do this. Part two is, and when I say part two, I also mean paragraph two eventually in your statement of purpose. Part two is where does, where does this passion come from? How did you first get interested in this? You know, um, sometimes we don't fully know, like um, I'll give you an example. Like I think sometimes we think that our passions are just kind of like random, but actually the things that you really care about in a passionate way, they come from some experience in your past. Maybe somebody introduced you to it. Maybe just by accident, you were on a plane and you watched some video and then suddenly you became interested. So it, all kinds of random things could have happened in your past to get you interested in this. I remember my family didn't want to go. Uh, I didn't want to go to the beach with my family. I wanted to go to some other place. They took me to the beach and I ended up really loving it. So basically, we're talking now about the origin story of your passion. We always think about origin stories with films and stuff like that. How did this character first come into being? But here, we're kind of asking, how did this passion in your life, in your real life, come to being? Okay? How did you first get interested in this? And why did you first get interested in this? So this is different than the interest itself. If I'm really passionate about riding horses, right? I just love riding horses. I love how intelligent horses are. I love how you can... Kind of communicate with them even while you're riding with them there's a sense of they can feel you you can feel them it's almost like you have some kind of strange connection when you are riding them and taking care of them that's part one but part two i'm going to talk about that time when i was eight years old and i had a chance to pet a horse for the first time and i couldn't believe how soft it was and when i first looked into the eye of that horse i realized that there was some sensitivity and intelligence there that i didn't expect to see and ever since then, I've been fascinated in learning more about them. Okay, so that's going to be my origin story. I just made that up, but, the, but I'm just giving you an example of how it works. Okay, so I want you to write two or three sentences. I'm going to give you some time to do this. Two or three sentences about the origin of this passion. Where did it start for you? And if you can't think of one, think harder, because these don't just come out of nowhere. Maybe even a friend introduced you to something. Okay, great. Tell us about that first introduction and how that made you feel when you first got to see this thing, okay? So I want you to write two or three sentences about the origin of this passion of yours. Where did this come from? I hope you're doing this exercise because um, it's like you can try to remember what we talked about, but if you do it now, you're actually getting the work done on your statement of purpose so you have less work to do later, right? So I, I, I highly recommend participating. Where did this passion come from? I know I'm a huge basketball fan. I just love basketball. I was lucky enough to be the ball boy for a, a professional team when I was younger. And um, my mom used to always listen to basketball on the radio when I was very, very little. And not only did I fall in love with the radio, but I fell in love with basketball. So that was at a very, very young age. I remember hearing those radio broadcasts. And 
what was awesome about that is I got to imagine the games in my head. And um, I think that probably helped a little bit with my imagination. Maybe that's one of the reasons why I'm interested in writing even uh, today. So everything that you care about deeply was introduced to you at some point, okay? So part two is all about the origins of that passion, okay? Now, the reason we're talking about these, we're gonna take a little pause now between parts one and two, paragraphs one and two. The reason we're talking about this is because this passion is going to be the centerpiece of your statement of purpose. Okay, you are basically going to be saying to this university that you are applying to, that I am passionate about this subject. Here is my description of that passion, like uh, the details of that passion, like how this thing lights me up, how this thing excites me. And part two, you're gonna talk about where this came from. And the reason is because eventually you're going to say, this is not only something that interests me intellectually, but this is something that I want to study at your institution. So what we're doing is we're taking something that you care about. Remember that I was talking before about the, like the interplay between the connection between the heart and the head in a good piece of writing. We're taking something kind of from the heart and we're saying that I don't just care about this here. I also care about it here. And that's what makes me a serious student ready to tackle the challenges of the academic world at the university level, okay? So that's kind of a preview of part three, which is kind of our most important part, okay? Part three is right now, which is, what have you already studied about this thing? So a lot of times when you're passionate about something, you don't just uh, kind of experience it. You want to know more about it, right? You research it, you find out more details. So what have you already researched in your life about this thing? You know, have you bought any books about it? Have you uh, collected uh, any type of statistics or other information about this thing? Like, have you collected, if it's a musical thing, have you collected all the music available and the and the lyrics and things like that? Like, what have you been doing? Have you, did you, do you have a, a, a scrapbook or a collage or do you use Pinterest to make boards that are, in, uh, that show your interest in this thing? Whatever it might be, right? Like, how have you engaged with this thing so far? Say maybe if, if I love horses, maybe I can say something like, uh, you know, the first type of horse that I was in, that I was introduced to was this. But since then, I've actually realized that there are so many different breeds of horses. There are some that are great for running. There are some that are free and wild and will never be tamed. So I'm kind of going beyond that initial experience and in talking about all the different ways that I've been engaging with this. Maybe I'm really interested in Japanese animation. Fantastic. And I was lucky enough last year to go to Japan and I was able to see that Young people, older people, middle-aged people, everybody's interested in Japanese animation, right? So I'm kind of taking that initial interest and I'm saying, here are the ways that I've looked at this deeper in the past. Now, in addition to that, what are some ways that you would like to look at that deeper in the future? Maybe you've never been to Japan, but you're really interested in Japanese animation. You can also put down, even though I haven't had a chance to, to uh, go there yet, I would love to actually go see where these, um, the, this uh, type of literature comes from and the origins of that. I would like to investigate it more. So it doesn't always have to be that here's what I did. It can also be here's what I would like to do. In India, they only have this, these two types of horses available in a, in a farm setting, but in other parts of the world, they have all these other types of horses. I, ho I hope someday to go to Europe and other parts of Asia where I can see this horse and this horse and even the types of horses that, uh, uh, that uh, appear in the Olympics and things like this, right? Like future avenues of studying and engaging with this topic. Along those same lines, like what questions do you have about this, this passion of yours? Unanswered questions. Like, I'm really curious if like, um, uh, will there ever be a day when we stop using racing horses and allow horses to be free instead of being used for like the types of things that humans want them to do? Like, can't they just be their own entity and do what they want to do, right? These are a question that I have, right? So I'm thinking about the future, you know? 
that Japanese animation is so cool. I wonder if someday it will be introduced into the Indian school curriculum so we can see, we can learn some of these important lessons right here in India instead of just random people who are interested in Japanese culture, right? So questions that you have about this passion of yours. Um, with the, um, uh, I'm interested in the beach, with uh, the uh, climate change happening and temperatures going up around the world, what's going to be the future of beaches? If, if sea levels are rising, then very soon the beach as we know it won't exist because the water will be higher and will start to move inland. So this idea of these pristine uh, sand covered beaches won't, won't be the future. Instead, it, we will have to now engage with a new process of erosion. The, the trees will be right up against the water, you know, for hundreds of thousands of years until we have the beach again. So maybe rising sea levels will kind of destroy what we think of as, as the beach today, right? So this is something I'm wondering, will that happen? So that's a question that I have about this passion of mine for the future. So as you can see, part three has a lot. Like, what have I already studied about this thing? What would I like to study about this thing? And what questions do I have about this thing? What aspects of this thing would I like to know more about? So maybe you're passionate about food, about, about cooking. You love cooking, right? So one of your questions is going to be, there seems to be, one of your observations is going to be, there seems to be like either nutritious food or good tasting food and, and a choice between those two. But wouldn't it be great if we could have nutritious food that was also the best tasting food so that everybody uh, could be healthy in the things that they eat instead of having kind of this junk food culture and type of thing, right? That's an important question when it comes to cooking, right? Wouldn't it be great? If we could do that, how is it possible to do that, to merge those two priorities, right? So that's a, that's a fascinating question. I want to know more about how um, genetic modification and CRISPR technology can add nutrients to certain foods so that we can be the strongest uh, mentally and physically that we can possibly be. And how is that possible, right? That's a very important question. So as you can see, this is actually, I would argue, this is the most important part of the statement of purpose because honestly, like if you asked a hundred people on the street, are you passionate about something? Everybody would say, yes, they're passionate about something. But wait, what makes the what makes the difference is the, the type of person that is not just passionate, but wants to deepen that passion to go a little bit further. Everybody has a passion, but for most people, the passion just kind of stops where, wherever it is served to them. But the curious person wants to take what they already know and find out where they can unravel that and find out new avenues of thought and understanding about this passion. So that's why this is important because it shows your level of curiosity. Your level of curiosity and your questions about the world and the future are very attractive to perspective uh, um, uh, universities that are offering placements to students like you. So I hope that makes sense. We are not just kind of randomly digging around with this passion. We are trying to demonstrate our curiosity. And you also show your curiosity by what you've done in the past. Like if I, if I say that I have taken my passion and I've studied it in the following ways, that also demonstrates that you're the type of person that um, wants to go deeper wants to gather as much information and knowledge in order to have a full experience of something rather than just a level one. We call that superficial level, right? On the surface, we want to dig a little bit deeper and see what really makes this thing tick. And maybe some of that has to do with the history of where this comes from and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's part three. And maybe you've written some notes now, maybe not, but eventually later on, after this is over, you'll want to really build up part three into a full paragraph. What have you studied about this thing? What would you like to study about this, th this thing? And what questions do you have about that deeper level of understanding? Maybe even how this thing intersects with the future, how it might change in the future. Okay, and now part four. Part four is, why would this particular institution that you are writing the statement of purpose for, 
right? So let's go all the way back to the beginning of your statement of purpose. You are sending this as part of your application to one place. So you have, uh, you've assembled everything, but now you basically want to say, you want to say, why would I be a good fit with this particular place to study? So this is where you can show them that it's not that I just want to study any, at any university. I'm just, a, any university is fine. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be fine wherever I am. What you want to say is that this particular university, maybe it's flame, maybe it's something else. Like this particular university is a perfect fit for me for the following reasons. So this is where you can show the research that you've done about that place. At, at your university, you have this program. At your university, you have this professor. At your university, you have this course that I can take where I can deepen my understanding of this subject. So what you're doing here is you're connecting your passion to this place. And you're saying, this is the perfect place for me to study this thing further. Not just as a hobby, but as an actual intellectual pursuit. Something that I could really write about, think about, share with other people. So this is quite important, this is quite important. And if you think about it, if you think about it carefully, everything that I've said to you up until this point, parts one, two, and three, can be used for every institution. So let's say you're applying to university number one. You can basically write parts one, two, and three the same way we talked about it. University number two, parts one, two, and three, perfectly fine, right? You chose a passion, you unpacked it in the ways that I explained for you. But now in part four, we now have to tailor each statement of purpose to that particular institution. It's no longer enough for me just to write generically about every college. Now I have to say that Flame University, Harvard University, Georgetown University, is the perfect place for me to continue to study horses because you have an equestrian program, because you have this animal studies program, because you have one of the most prestigious professors in this field, you are showing your research about that place. And that really makes the person on the other end who's looking at it, who works at that institution, it makes them realize that you have thought this through. You're not just randomly picking this, uh, this college or university out because somebody told you to, you're actually committed to it because you've done some research and you're demonstrating why your passion fits with that place. And that's kind of like the coup de gras, kind of like the final straw. Sometimes you, everything up to this point has been very impressive, but then the, what pushes you over the top in terms of this person reading it, realizing, wow, this, this student really has their, their stuff together is, when they see that you have not only articulated this passion so well, but you've also connected it to the place where they work and the place that you would like to study. This shows a high level of sophistication and a high level of maturity and understanding on your part. That's very impressive for the reader. I know if I was reading that, I would be very impressed by that student, much more than the student who sent me what we call a cookie cutter or a generic letter that could have been read by any institution. She really wants to go to flame. Look at, she's mentioning these individual professors, these courses, these programs. Now, the final piece of the puzzle, before we get to like any questions that you might have about statement of purpose or anything like that is, if space permits you at this point, if space permits you here in part four, now remember, we only, we're only we talking about four parts, one, two, three, four, four being like connecting your passion to this institution. I don't see anything wrong with mentioning some of your other passions. Here, here's what I mean by that. At, way back at the beginning, like 45 minutes ago, I asked you to pick something you were passionate about. If I gave you 10 minutes, you could have written down 15, 20 things that you were passionate about. Now you picked one, and we've been kind of tra 
tracking that one, tracing it and tracking that one all the way up to this point, okay? But you're probably passionate about more than one thing. My guess is you're passionate about several things. If I'm writing a statement of purpose, I am going to add one sentence there in part four that says, you know, Georgetown University is the perfect place for me to study this. Uh, it also is a great place for me to pursue my secondary passions, which include this, 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 and this, right? I'm gonna also kind of point out to the institution that I'm more than just my passion about riding horses. I also am in interested in these other things as well. I think that's not a terrible idea. Now we're not going to go into them as deeply as we did the other ones, but we are gonna show that we have a, a, a variety of interests as well as that one. So I hope that makes sense. Like our statement of purpose is built around one core item, but we're gonna throw in some other details that show us that we're more than just that one passion. And at the end, we will close it appropriately, usually with sincerely and then your name and the signature, but um, the institution will also give you guidance on how to do that. They'll probably give you some instructions on what your statement of purpose should look like. Sometimes they even give you a template to use and all you have to do is kind of fill in those paragraphs and then send it along. Before send it, sending anything along, always, and this is the case at, at the university level, this is the case with every single assignment that you will ever do, you always want to read it over very carefully and you know, make that first draft good, but then make that second draft where you're going in and changing things and making it stronger, taking some stuff out. Just like we talked about making that clay uh, vase, right? You're gonna get rid of some of that clay. You're gonna slowly refine it until it's as good as it can be. Then we're gonna do a final copy uh, edit, which means proofreading, making sure the grammar is right, the spelling is right, all the alignment is right, no double spacing between words, all of that stuff. And then because this document is so important for your future, you're also going to give it to somebody else to read. You're gonna say mom and dad, or maybe your best friend, or maybe your uncle or aunt, and you're gonna say, would you please read this for me and make sure that there are no mistakes of any kind. Make sure I use the right word every time I tried to, make sure I didn't use any contractions like didn't instead of did not, because in formal writing, we, we don't speak, we don't write the same way that we speak. We, we write these things out like that. Do I, do I have all my capitalization correct? Do I have any spaces before the full stop instead of the full stop being tight up against the final letter? All of these details kind of show your attention to detail, which makes you look much better, right? So you don't want even the smallest mistake in your statement of purpose. These are the final touches that we put on, but those final touches are very, very important. There's been studies done to show that the, if the content is great, but there's mistakes, grammatical, spelling, spacing mistakes, um, it ends up not being seen for what it actually is because uh, the student didn't care about those details and therefore the person reading it also doesn't care to read it. So we don't wanna ever have to go down that path because you put so much hard work into this, we want to make sure that it's polished and perfect. Okay, so I'll just give you a little bit of a recap of what we talked about. To write a statement of purpose, what we're doing is finding something from our real lives that we actually care about on a deep level and not only care about something that we would imagine ourselves maybe studying at the university level. It could be something as seemingly completely like a hobby. Like I said before, like I'm a big basketball fan, but there are tens of thousands of people right now studying the details of basketball related uh, um, uh, courses at the university level, sports medicine, sports broadcasting, all kinds of things like that, right? So even something that's a hobby of ours can eventually become something that we want to study. The reason I say this is because some students feel like, um, well, I really like butterflies. Butterflies are fascinating to me, but if I write about that, I don't think the university will take me seriously. Incorrect. You don't have to write about economics, macroeconomics to be taken seriously. The fact that you have a passion about anything is actually impressive. Now you're taking this passion, this hobby of yours, and you are transforming it into something that you can actually study on a deeper level and write about, and write about so competently and so well that other people might want to read what you have to say. This is the ultimate in academia. When you're interested, curious about the world around us, and then putting it into a form 
that it actually engages with real research about that thing. So just it, it, don't limit yourself to things that you think are sound sophisticated. It can be anything that you're passionate about as long as other people have studied this, other people have done research on it, because if they've done research and studied it, then so can you. And maybe even someday you'll have something brand new to say about this that no one else has said. So that's how it all starts, by picking our passion. And in part one, really talking about why we're passionate about that thing. Like, what's so interesting about that? I think butterflies are amazing because the transformation that they go through from caterpillar to chrysalis to butterfly is just is as close to magic as nature gets. I can talk about all the details of that. This absolutely fascinates you. It fascinates me personally. So that will be very easy to write about that. And part two is why, like what, what was my first introduction to this thing? The origin story of this passion. Where did I first get lit up by this thing that I care so much about? Where did it all start? Who introduced me to it? What happened after they introduced me? Where did I go next? And that leads us right into part three, which is where, what, where did I dig around with respect to this? What did I find out about this that I didn't know initially? What would I like to find out about this in the future? You know, I really only took up this hobby uh, three years ago. And, you know, I know some people that have been studying this thing for 30, 40 years. Well, I would like to do that too. I would like to go to Papua New Guinea and see these types of butterflies that exist in nowhere else on planet Earth, right? What would I, what have I studied? And what would I like to study about this thing? And not only that, but like, what questions do I have? Like, you know, the United Nations is saying that uh, half, of, half of the species on Earth are disappearing within a few years because of climate change. Like, like, is that going to happen to my butterflies as well? Right, questions, important questions with respect to this passion of yours. And then part four is, I would like to explore these questions and others at this particular institution that I'm applying to for the following reasons. There's a program there. Maybe, maybe the university is located in a place where you can study these things. I don't know, right? There could be many reasons why that location is a great location for you to do that study. Maybe this university specializes in this topic that I'm so interested in, fantastic. And that really shows the person on the other end that not only are you serious, but you've done a little bit of pre-planning and research to uh, make sure that that fits fits like a hand in a glove, okay? And that's it, those are the four parts. And that's how to write a statement of purpose. It highlights what you care about, your heart, and it also then transitions to the way that you intellectually engage uh, with the things that you're passionate about, okay? And that's kind of the magic of it. Whereas the essay is all about the heart, this one is about the heart uh, and the head. So that's kind of the end of the lecture part of this, and I hope that you gain something from it. Um, I would also love to hear any kind of questions that you have about statements of purpose. Now, perhaps um, there were some questions that you had written down initially that I didn't answer. And if so, fantastic. And let's, we can probably spend the next 20, 25 minutes going through any of those questions if you have them. If Ashika wants to kind of uh, moderate that, that would be great. Uh, thank you, Professor. I'm sure it was an enriching session for all students. Uh, moving on to the question and answers, as you've um, said, I think a lot of questions, firstly, have been answered by you in the first session itself. Um, but the, as I'm going to the questions, I've realized is, you know, how certain subjects, like let's say economics and psychology or astronomy and astrophysics can be incorporated into their um, you know, uh, SOP and something that they can write differently is something they all want to know from you. Yeah, well, so those subjects fit very nicely because they are already like academic subjects, right? So let's just take astronomy, for example, okay? So what's so interesting? My first part one is gonna be like, what's so interesting about astronomy? Astronomy talks about the the, the neighborhood, like our, uh, our planet and our solar system, but also astronomy also goes far beyond that. Not only that, but like when we look at when we look at other things in the universe, we're actually looking back in time because of the way that light takes time to travel to us. So I'm interested in astronomy for all these reasons, right? I'm gonna unpack it in part one. Part two, I'm gonna talk about that first time I went to a planetarium and I got a chance to be turned on to that field. Or that time my uncle let me look through the telescope and I saw a planet Saturn for the first time. And I realized, wow, there's other, 
worlds out there for us to explore, right? So that we're gonna kind of go uh, into that origin story. And this is where you can actually have fun with a little bit of storytelling. One of the words we haven't really talked about is storytelling, but story, a story actually means a journey of change. So there's a lot of incorrect definitions of what a story is out there, but a story is a sequence of change. Basically, I used to think this, and then I thought that. So you could say something like, you know, uh, I used to always see my uncle with this telescope and I felt like he was just kind of bored, like looking up at the sky. Like I kind of looked like really silly to me until one day he invited me to take a look at it. And then it something inside me changed and suddenly it became curious, right? So then whenever we're talking about a change, we're talking about a story and you can really have fun with that part two because part two is all about that storytelling. Uh, and then part three is, you know, since I became interested in this, what have I, what research have I done? You know, and the good news is that I think one of the things in part three is like, what questions do I have about this field? Astronomy, like every day there's a new theory that pops up about the, the, the universe. You know, the latest one is that the whole universe might be a hologram based on the information that is stored in the, in the shell of a black hole, like all kinds of interesting details that we're finding out through science and stuff like that. Right, so there's plenty of questions that need answering in the future, and then then and in, the, in part four, you're going to connect that to this particular institution. So um, all of whatever subject, literally any passion that you can name, your challenge is: can I create those four parts around it? And before I kind of joked and I said that you know uh, you can't do it with every subject because it hasn't been studied, but like. And I kind of gave the example of my dog, but but actually you can do that too, right? So uh, I'm interested in my dog, which makes me interested in all dogs, right? So I'm going to talk about the origin story of meeting my dog, but then I'm going to talk about dog behavior and what we're learning about human beings based on our understanding of dog behavior. Fascinating field. In fact, right now, thousands of people are writing about it, right? So even though I said, we, you know, make sure to pick a rich subject, if you're skilled enough, you could actually take literally any passion and build these four parts around it for your statement of purpose. That was really well said. <laughs> um, another question that I'm seeing in the um, uh, questions also is, you know, a lot of students are still in grade 10 and they haven't really found out their really passionate stream, but they are keen to, you know, um, maybe a few pointers that, you know, what to do if something that you're not passionate about is yet clear, but going through an SOP in the same way. Yeah, this is good. Like, in fact, it's a little bit scary if somebody puts you on the spot and says like, what are you passionate about, right? Like, I don't know. I really don't know what I'm passionate about. But if you change the question just a little bit to what do you care about? It's the same question. It's actually the same question, but it's just packaged in a different way to make it easier to answer. If I say like, I really care about um, the environment, right? That means that you are passionate about the environment, but it just became easier to answer it when I asked you what you care about. So you can kind of uh, look inward and ask yourself, like, what are, what are five things that I care about deeply? Like things that I would give up my time to, to, to engage with, things that I would love to learn more about, things that I, things that I care about with my heart and not just my head. Like, so instead of saying, what are you, instead of uh, probing this question, what are you passionate about? Just ask yourself what I care about. And I think you might actually come up with some material. That is actually pretty informative. I wish I had <laughs> you when I was writing my SOP. Um, so a lot of, so, so one of the students is asking, you know, uh, if I've, you know, if I've been to an institution I plan to apply to, and he's participated in the program at offers. Um, and talk to the students there as well. So how can they mention it in the SOP and how in detail should we, should they write about it, et cetera? Yeah, so this is a, um, the even though I kind of uh, glossed over it a little bit, sometimes part four can actually be a little bit more challenging than I made it out to be just now. Because maybe you don't know any particular courses or programs or professors at that institution that are perfect for that. So you're not going to say, you know, I would love to study astronomy there because you have these two courses. Instead, you might say something like, 
in order to study astronomy, you need to have an open mind because theories are changing all the time. And one of the things that I've learned about Flame or other some other institution is that they encourage people to have an open mind and to think differently and to not just think the same thing because that's the way we've always thought. And if Flame is a place that encourages that, that's a place where I wanna be because in order to study this thing, I need to have that same mindset. So it doesn't always have, you don't always have to point to particular things. You can also just point to the way that the organization uh, thinks for lack of a better term and, and showing that that's how you think as well. All right. Uh, next is, um, you know, since various countries have different priorities, like the UK is primarily academic, and the US focuses on all round admissions, they were wondering whether or not the SOP focus should vary depending on where they are going to. Or yeah, I, I, I think so. I, I think that um, before, one of the things I said is that like institution one, parts three, one, two, and three are the same. Institution two, parts one, two, and three are the same, but not necessarily. Like you might, you might be open to studying more than one thing. Like maybe you really are passionate about starting a business Sunday. So you're gonna have one SOP that is focused around business. Something you're really interested in, your family has a business, you want to inherit the family business, do something with it. You can, and you feel like there is an instant, there is a business school that you would like to submit that to. That's a perfect fit. Now, what about a different SOP that talks about a different passion of yours? In other words, you don't have to only have one template. You might want to have multiple uh, SOPs that can be adapted to that particular institution. And you're absolutely right. Different countries have certain reputations, not only different countries, but different universities inside different countries have certain, certain different priorities that you might want to orient your statement of purpose around. If I was applying to, uh, 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 if I was applying to Sarah Lawrence College in New York, I would write a certain SOP. If I was applying to Oxford College in the UK, I would write a different SOP, different subject matter, right? Because the, the types of things that those places specialize in are so different that I would have to be willing to be different on my end as well with my SOP. Um. We have another one from Tavishi. So in your experience, what do professors in admission committees tend to find most compelling or something surprising in their SOB? Um, I, okay, this is a really good question. And there's like so many important things that I didn't get a chance to really expand on. But um, if like, let's just say that we were really doing, let's just say we had five hours instead of uh, 90 minutes today. And we were really going to really write the SOP, like actually really write the whole thing instead of just do an introduction to it. I would have had each participant write down five passions, like in order, you know, that the beginning, like in order to get us started that we're going to, you pick one of those passions and go, go down the order. But I would once you've written down five, I would have you choose the most unusual of those passions, right? The one thing that is unlikely to appear on somebody else's statement of purpose. Believe it or not, a lot of students are passionate about the same things. Many people are passionate about cricket. Many people are passionate about music. There's nothing wrong with those things. But one of the things that college, uh, the people who read college applications really like is when they come across something that they haven't seen before, right? This student is passionate about, uh, uh, about cave painting, right? Like, wow, like I've never read a statement of purpose that was focused around cave painting. Okay, actually, personally, in real life, I'm, I'm interested in cave paintings. So this is the type of thing that's going to stick in the memory of the person reading it. It, does that mean there's something wrong with your passions? No, but when it's time for you to choose which one to orient your statement of purpose around, try to pick something that is unlikely to be written about by the vast majority of other applicants, right? So let's, let's imagine that you're really passionate about animals. Okay, fine, but maybe I'm gonna pick one specific animal that maybe that the person who's reading it doesn't even know that much about. So I'm gonna teach them something as well as demonstrate my passion. So try to pick something that's a little bit offbeat. You know, the, the word weird is sometimes used as kind of a negative word, but actually it's not a bad 
way to think about your statement of purpose. Pick something. And if you don't like the word weird, you can pick the word unusual. All right. Um, another question is, you know, what are some common mistake applicants make in their SOP? Like, how can we avoid it altogether? Uh, I think that the most common mistake is just simply repeating something that is already in a different part of your application. So a lot of times a student will write a college essay about um, the time that they injured their leg in that football match, right? That they, they injured their leg in that football match and they're gonna talk about how they had to give up football but ended up channeling their passion into something else, right? So the, the, this is the whole topic of the essay when then doing that shows adaptability, perseverance, improvisation, all kinds of good qualities, right? So they're gonna show, demonstrate that through the essay. And then in the statement of purpose, in part two, they say the reason that I became interested in sports medicine is because I broke my leg playing football. So it's basically just a re a reorganization of the same material that's in the essay. And now it's been moved over to the statement of purpose. So this is what we call a missed opportunity. You had a chance to tell the receiver something new about you. Well, they already knew about this thing with, with the injury. Uh, but instead of that, you kind of just repeated that same thing. And it's difficult because like, well, that injury was really important to me and it made a big difference in my life. Sure, fantastic. But that's what the essay the essay already delivered that. What's the purpose of re-delivering it again in a different document? So I think this is one of the common um, mistakes. Okay, uh, I think this is also something um, that I found interesting is, you know, people have multiple fashions that they've engaged with independently, which don't particularly line up together. Um, and how do they present them cohesively in the SOP? Yeah, so this is uh this goes back to that thing I was mentioning about like making a list of your passions. Like like if you like let's just say that I I ask you okay what are you passionate about nothing what do you care about well I only care about this one thing. You're basically now forcing yourself to draw these four parts from that one thing, and that's a lot of pressure. Like maybe maybe you can do that, or maybe you feel like uh, there's not enough material to do that. So when I'm really working with actual students on this, and we make a list of, let's say, three things that they're passionate about, we pick one of them, we pick like the most unusual one, and we start to build the statement of purpose. And we realize, for example, that there is no origin story about this. They don't remember anything about when, when it, they were first introduced to it. And they really can't think of any questions or future points of research that they might wanna do about this subject. They just really like it as it is right now. And they really can't see any other dimensions to it. Then we'll say something like, okay, no problem. But, but we have milked this thing for all we can milk it. And it's not providing any more material for us. Let's go back to our, our list of passions and find another one. So it's really important to recognize that we make a list of multiple passions so that we can find one that allows us to build all four of those. It's not always the case that every one of those is going to lend itself to a statement of purpose. Sometimes they just it ends up kind of just drying up and we have to find out which one is the richest here, which one has the most material. All right. Um, another question is, is there a difference between an SOP written to a traditional university or a liberal arts university like FLIM? Um, I don't think, personally, I really don't think so. Um, the only thing that with respect to this that you might want to think about is these days, like through social media and things like that, there are there are a lot of, even YouTube and things along those lines, there are a lot of resources that will specifically say something like, um, you know, uh, the admissions team from this university is going to give you some advice about how to get into this exact university, right? Like, in other words, sometimes they will, there will be resources. I know they're out there with the Ivy Leagues, for example. I know that there are tons of videos you can find online to say, like, if you want to go to Columbia University, these are the four things you should think about when you're filling out the application. There are actually people who really work at that place telling you what they want 
to see. So in those cases, it's worth paying attention to those details. But just like saying, okay, the reputation of this university is like this, that means I should write my statement of purpose like this. I, I don't really think that's true. Um, but you should also, but you should definitely pay attention to the specific advice that's given. Like maybe an in, maybe an interview is done with the head of admissions at this uh, at this one school. Read the interview, find out the types of things that they mentioned in the interview, so that you can make sure your statement of purpose fits that. Um, but that's about it in terms of I think that traditional versus unique universities versus uh, niche niche ones and colleges and all this stuff. I don't know if there needs to be a template for each type of institution. Okay, so this one would be our last question. It's an interesting one that I found is, can an SOP written in a poetry form? Like, I think an SOP can be written in so many forms. I think like a poetry, for example, can it be done? Basically, no. Okay, so, so we, uh, before I, I had mentioned this idea of formal and informal, formal and informal, what formal writing means, the difference between formal and informal is this. With formal writing, two things become high priorities, structure and situation. So that means like, what is the situation? Somebody whose status is higher than you is going to look at this. And our structure means that like the, the, the way that the writing actually looks is important. So let me give you an example. If you were, if you wake up in the morning and you write down the things that you want you need to do that day, your little to-do list, the structure is not important, right? Who cares? It's just an informal piece of writing for you, or you're sending a text to a friend. The structure is not important because the audience is not important, somebody on your level, right? But when we're talking to somebody whose status is higher than us, in order to show respect, we want to write formally. And part of writing formally is following the instructions of the assignment. Now, there are very famous examples of people doing something risky in their applications, but it always comes in the essay portion, not in the statement of purpose. In the essay portion, you can kind of bend the rules a little bit, and kind of maybe be a little risky and show some extra creativity because uh, the essay is a place for storytelling. And within the realm of storytelling, sometimes we can do slightly offbeat things and get away with it. But a statement of purpose is actually a serious piece of writing. That's kind of like if your teacher asks you to do an essay, but instead of doing an essay, you write a poem, the teacher will appreciate your creativity, but you're not meeting the assignment. So technically it's like showing disrespect to the assignment. All right. So thank you so much, Professor. It was a wonderful session. And thank you students for attending the session.